Well, with more on the Zika virus, we're joined by Nikos Vasilakis, a professor of pathology at the University of Texas in the United States. Professor, thanks for joining us. First, if you can, just give us a better sense of how bad this really is. It's spread frighteningly quickly. Thousands of children are now affected, and there's no treatment in sight. Uh, you're correct. The situation is really bad uh, in Latin America. Um, there are, in Brazil alone, there are over uh, a million confirmed cases of Zika infection and about 4,000 cases of microcephaly. In addition to that, we also see uh, another a rare neurological event, that is Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, there are also reports coming out of Colombia that the first cases of microcephaly are appearing there. And this is logical since the uh, Zika epidemic, it had a, a lag phase of a few months until it reached Colombia. So right now we should be extremely concerned because we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. The raining season is about to start again in the southern hemisphere the mosquito populations is going to be again at high levels and again uh, given that the olympics are going to take place in brazil this summer this is going to be a tremendous uh, influx of uh, immunologically naive individuals that they would have a chance to be infected and spread the disease upon the return to their home countries so it's a major concern. Absolutely. Let me ask you, though, are you, are you relatively certain that the Zika virus is the cause of microcephaly and the thousands of children we've seen infected now? We have seen uh, direct evidence of microcephaly. There were a handful of stillborn babies where we were able to identify the Zika virus present in their tissues. Uh, this is part of the direct evidence, but uh, the indirect evidence is overwhelming. As you indicated earlier, the normal rate of microcephaly in Brazil was about 150 cases a year. And once Zika um, epidemic and transmission occurred in Brazil, the number of cases um, skyrocketed to over 3,500 uh, okay. cases. So yes, there is both direct and indirect evidence. Let me ask you, is there also a fear, though, that this virus could mutate as well as so many viruses do and turn into something as difficult to deal with as perhaps malaria? I am not so certain about that. Yes, the virus is changing. But what it concerns me most is uh, changes that may occur in the virus that may uh, change the host range of the virus. Uh, and what it comes to mind is chikungunya. Chikungunya uh, caused a major epidemic in Africa and Southeast Asia by a single um, mutation uh, in the virus, which allowed the mosquito, uh, which allowed the virus to be transmitted more efficiently by the Aedes albopictus mosquito. So it's a major concern that changes in the genetic makeup of uh, the mosquito of the virus may cause uh, unforeseen changes. Okay. Professor Vasilakis, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on TRT World. You're welcome.